In this video, you're going to learn how to get more valuable insights out of user interviews and make the process more enjoyable and fun for everybody involved. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you do more work that makes you proud by designing and delivering services that are good for people and business. And a key part in actually designing and delivering those services is interviewing people, understanding users through interviews. And I see a big problem with interviews is that they are still in a lot of cases used as a survey method, as a survey tool. And I think um, that's a really bad way to think about interviews because interviews are not a way, not the way to validate data. That's, that's not how we should be using that, them. Uh, that's not the stage of the design process we should be using interviews in. Interviews, the way we use them, and the way I think you'll get the most value out of them is early on in the design process where you're exploring and trying to uh, uncover, unravel, and discover uh, a certain topic. That's, I think, where user interviews really shine and where you get really the most value out of them. And like I said, interviews are probably one of the first things you should be doing in your design process. And if you mess that up, it will have great consequences for the rest of your project. You'll stay on the surface. You won't uncover any interesting insights. Uh, you're basically going to waste uh, your time doing them. On the flip side, if you manage to do interviews well, they can be a great energy boost for everyone involved. And you can learn so much that will inspire you to for the rest of your project. The way I like to think about interviews and what you can get out of them is like imagine that every insight you find is like uh, a Lego brick. And when you do interviews, not really in a good way, you'll end up with Lego bricks, just the yellow and blue Lego bricks, the square ones, and that won't allow you to create many interesting solutions further on in the process. And on the other side, if you do interviews well, you'll end up with a lot of exotic Lego bricks, all different kinds of colors, all different kinds of shapes. You'll have a much broader uh, spectrum of insights that you can later on use to come up with good ideas and solutions. So interviews can be really powerful, but they can also cripple you. So I want to talk about how some, some tips that will allow you to actually get the most value out of interviews in your next project. So the first thing you should always try to do when conducting user interviews is to prepare your participants. Basically, give them some kind of homework. They will do two things. It will allow you to collect data even before the interview starts, and it will also get your participants in the right mindset. So the conversation that you'll have actually during the interview will be much smoother and you'll be able to go much more in depth. So what kind of homework can you give? Well, there are many different things. Uh, one thing we like to do is to let people make photos that are relevant for the topic that we'll be talking about. So I don't know uh, if we're going to talk about your ideal uh, workplace, make a photo of what makes you happy in your work or make a few photos. I don't know, something like that. And you might be thinking, well, Will people actually do that? Do the are the participants willing to spend time doing homework? They are already investing time in doing the interview. Our experience is that they actually will, especially if you sort of have a good explanation and make sure that the assignment is really clear, that the homework is really clear. It shouldn't be complex. It shouldn't be too complicated. Just a simple assignment and explain why they should be doing that and how it will contribute to the, the the interview later on. And then you'll be surprised how many people actually find it fun and enjoyable to do that stuff because they will able to talk about it later on in the interview. So tip number one, prepare people, give them homework, make it fun and make it in a way that is also giving you some data. That was tip number one. So here is tip number two. And tip number two 
is to design conversation tools. Now, it has been said that we as service designers are tool toolkit makers. And I think in this case, it is really good that we are because the way we try to do our interviews. And I think what we've seen that gets the most value out of interviews is when you have something to facilitate the conversation. Um, what you want to do is to have a tool that is not uh, too strict, uh, that that provides enough room to talk about the things that are relevant to the participant, but a tool that also gives enough structure to sort of guide uh, the conversation. Uh, you might be thinking, what kind of tools could we use? Well, if you don't have anything, uh, a mind map, just a mind map is already a good start um, because you'll be drawing the conversation out in front of you and people will be sort of making connections, but also, um, a conversation tool might be um, the, the, a timeline, just a timeline. If if that's relevant in your um, interview and your project, let people draw on the timeline, point things out, and yeah, that that really helps. But the thing is, don't make it too strict. Leave enough room to to let the conversation go in the way it's going to go, but provide some kind of structure to actually be able to ask more meaningful questions and make sure that things aren't just communicated verbally, but that they're also uh, communicated in a visual way in front of you. And you can also do this digitally. Uh, we do most of our interviews face to face. That's our preferred style when we can, but we've also designed conversation tools that we use uh, in a virtual environment, like uh, through tools like real-time board. I can talk about more uh, more about that in a different episode, but so tip number two is basically have some kind of conversation tool. Design conversation tools that are specific for your project and for the conversation you're going to have to guide the conversation and to get more in-depth in the topic you want to talk about. That was tip number two. The third tip is to share your own stories. Now, that might seem a little bit odd when you think, well, won't my stories uh, influence or bias the answers of your participants? And they might, uh, depending on what you tell. But what I mean is, I think you'll get the most value out of an uh, interview when you're behaving like a human being rather than a human survey machine. This is not a survey. Remember, we're having... It's, it's more of a conversation uh, from my perspective rather than an interview. So uh, for me, it's really important to connect with the other person uh, across the table or persons. Uh, and for that, it's also important that I share stuff, that, I, that the other people see that I can relate to them and that I'm not just here to extract value, but I'm also here to, as a human being. Um, and when you share your own stories, people see for one that you're listening to them and that you that you're really interested to hear what they have to say so my tip even though and you have to be mindful about what you share and what not to share to prevent as much bias as you will but be personal be authentic don't be afraid to share some of your things so when somebody tells you about a story and you can relate to that just relate to that in that moment and you can always ask questions to validate if something is based on a bias of what you just said or if it's really something that somebody really means. Remember, we're not human serving machines. We're there to connect with people and to get insights. This is not an exact science. We're not looking for the exact truth. We're here to find insights and find clues. And I think the best way you'll get there is if you make real authentic connections with people. So don't be afraid to do that in your next interview. And here's one more bonus tip uh, that works really well in interviews. And that is to let people point out things in the real world. So collect, I, I would say collect evidence of things that people are talking about. Now, what I mean, um, in the first tip, I was referring to letting people make photos with their phone of stuff. That is a really good way to actually collect evidence because people will need to point things out that they want to express. 
but there are also the classic assignments like um, grab something out of your wallet or uh, pick up something that is on your desk or take something out of your bag. Or even if you're in doing the homework assignment, uh, let people make a print of uh, something and then write a list. At least have something physical, have something to point at because that makes uh, a story much more credible and it's much easier to talk about things that you can point out rather than just having a conversation, a verbal conversation where it might be like conversation like I wish I could or I would or uh, it, it might become wishful thinking. Well, when you can point things out, it's much more likely that things actually happened or that there's evidence of it. So try to include in your interview set up a way that you can actually collect physical evidence that really helps. And if you want to know more about interviewing users, there's a super awesome book that I can recommend to everybody. It's by Steve Portugal, who was a guest on the show. I don't remember the exact number, but uh, it will pop up over here. Um, and the book is called Interviewing Users. So check it out. Uh, I will also include it down below in the show notes. So these three tips should really help you to get more valuable insights out of interviews and make your, your time worthwhile and also the time of your participants. But I'm really interested, what are some common classic mistakes that you see people making when doing user interviews? Leave a comment down below and I'll try to make a video on that and it will be nice if we co can co-create that one. If you're interested to learn how to explain service design to the people around you without confusing them, check out the free course that I've got for you over here. And I've got a playlist with some other interesting videos that will help to level up your service design skills. The playlist is over here. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.